This tutorial discusses how to use HTML form to create interactive application and which allowed us to capture users' input uh, such as a guestbook or conduct an online survey. Uh, on the server side, um, we have to use CGI script or other server side uh, program to process the form data that has been collected. Form by itself typically um, do not perform input data validation. Uh, it is possible to use client-side JavaScript um, to perform some of the data in, uh, validation. Uh, this is an example of a form which may have text box, check box, radio button, uh, a drop-down list box and a text area for user to enter uh, very long descriptions or comments. Um, usually we will have a submit button which allowed us to send the data um, to the server-side program to be processed. The reset button allowed us to reset the form to its original status. World Wide Web when it first came out, it's really for one-way publication. And with Forum, um, we are able to create two-way interaction between the client and the server. We can also use it to create a web application that can handle transactions. Um, web 2.0 um, is really a platform for users to participate, which Forum become very important for them to enter their opinion and data and that's really the foundation for some of the social networking applications. So let's look at uh, a simplest um, form. Um, this is a simple form. Uh, form come with first of all um, the phone tag and that's the end of the phone tag and this is the scope of the form form has an attribute called action the action attribute specify a URL um, of a program of a server side program that can process the form um, for <coughs> this lectures uh, we're going to use um, this server-side program that I have developed uh, for testing purpose. <coughs> the method can be get or post. Um, if you use get, then you're going to see uh, some query string attached to the end of your URL. Form contains several form elements. Um, here we have three form elements. One is a text field, like this and the tag is called input, the type is called text. We will specify an attribute called name and give it a unique value and this will become a variable name associated with this text field. Maximum length specify how many characters that we can enter in the, in the text field. Another input tag um, however, the type is submit, which make it as a submit button. If the type is reset, that will become a reset button. So um, let's see how this will work. Let's say we have, let's enter this phone HTML code in notepad let's save it I'm going to call it research.htm let's save it and let's test it to see what 
it would look like and also how it would behave if we submit the data. So let's open. And we'll create a research. So here I'm going to just enter Minju Chen. Uh, submit. The guest name is the variable name for the text view and the major change is the value that the user enters through the text field. And the variable name for the text field is the value of the name attribute for this text phone element, text field phone element. If we go back and we can do reset, set it to blank. If I type like Bob Smith, and submit it again. It's still the guest name, which is the variable name, and the value now is Bob Smith. So um, this is actually the server side uh, program in the working. So this is how it work um, when when you send the forms to the server, uh, when you request a phone document from the server, they will return the phone document. When you fill out the data as a user, you will submit the data to the server. And since the action attribute is pointing to a server side script, uh, the web server will forward the phone data to the server side script. The script will process the data and will generate an HTML document on the fly. So the HTML document returned to us is dynamically generated. It is dynamically generated and that will return back to us. So it depends on what we have entered over here. What will we return back to us after we submit the form may, may be different. Depends on the, um, the input data. So the form tag started with form and end of the form. The action attribute is pointing to an URL of a program that handle the form data. And the method can be get or post. Um, and there's some form element. Input tag can be used for several form elements. Select is for drop down list box or list box. Text area is for multiple line uh, text box input. So input tag is, is a complicated tag because it depends on the type attributes value. If it's text, that's a single line text box. If it's password, if here, if it's password, then that's a password entry, which the actual data will not be displayed to the end user. Checkbox is for checkbox. Radio is for radio button. You can also have a hidden view with a variable and and a value associated with it. Submit and reset are for the submit and reset button. You definitely want to have at least a submit button. And the name attribute is a variable name associated with all phone elements uh, other than submit and reset button. The value um, is default value for the text box and but for submit and reset button, it become a label for the submit and reset button, which you are allowed to customize. Uh, an attribute called check allow you to uh, check the checkbox or radio button by default. Size is the size of the text box, and maximum length is maximum number of character acceptable in the text box. So, if you this is actually a sample form that we illustrated earlier. If you create a form like this and submit it to a server-side program, the server-side program basically will um, receive the form elements by its variable and the data associated with it. 
So let's go over the um, this form as an example. Um, we're still using the same server side program to test the form. This is the text field. We will have some uh, prompt um, text to prompt the user what this phone element is about. This is for checkbox with a variable name. If the checkbox is checked, then we're going to send this variable name and the, this value to the system. This is a text just try to tell the user what this checkbox is for. For radio button, this is actually a group of radio button which has the same variable name and they all have different value associated with the ver the same variable name depends on which radio button is selected um, the radio button allow you to choose one radio button from let's say three here uh, if you select another radio button then the one selected previously will be um, deselected you can by default select one of the radio button to start with if you wish by adding this check attribute. And let's continue. Um, this is actually for drop down list box. When you use size one for select attribute, that's the drop down list box. If you choose if you enter size equal to three that become a list box of size 3. You can have as many options as you like. Each option could have a value attribute indicating the value to be associated with the variable if this list item has been selected. If you do not specify the value attribute then the text after the option tag will be used as the value to be associated with the column. Uh, the color variable when you s when you select this entry you can also by default select one of the um, drop down list box options uh, so green will be selected by default since we use the attribute selected here text area allow you to enter uh, a longer text within a multiple line data entry field you can specify, uh, say this text area has to be three line. You can also, if you wish, uh, specify the number of columns, uh, let's say 40, uh, associated with the, with the text area, if you wish. And we have the submit button, reset button, and so that complete this complicated form. So let's try to test it very quickly um, so if we change copy it and paste let's just save it so we can write window chain choose facts you see green is the default selection if you choose blue so we can send in the data Minder Chen is my name checkbox is checked so no HTML is on the media we select is facts the color is blue and this is the comment field that we have entered if we deselect this, choose electronic email. If we choose red, and let's try that again, you find out that we don't have that no HTML variable at all. The missing variable is indication that the checkbox is not checked. And the red, we don't have a value associated with it. So the value red itself, uh, the label, the text will be used the value associated with the variable color. Okay. 
So this concludes our lectures um, on HTML forms.